time. Hi. <laughs> uh, my name is Maureen Rain. Truly Wetchko. I am 52 years old. I'm originally from Winnipeg, Manitoba. On campus at Wall Street. I didn't know about the services that were available. I stayed in a tent actually down on my head. Well, that was one person just like you. Yeah. But I still am. <laughs> I'm a winter warming drop-in worker, um, team lead, technically. So I am here every morning um, from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. How old are you in your mom died? 15. 15? Yeah. Um, yeah. That must have been hard. Yeah. Going to school and everything. It was. I told my brother was my dad died. But then when did she die? She committed suicide. So that pretty devastating yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. Were you there when it happened? Yeah. Were you the one that found her? Yeah. Wow. Wow. We've been through a lot. Yep. I can't even imagine. So other than the youth program, what do you want to do? Open restaurant. Do my culinary. Go corporate. Be a CEO. That's the dream. That's the dream. I quit school after my dad died. I shut down everything. I took my wife off the street six years ago, mm -hmm. and um, taking her off the streets and dealing with her addictions and her mental illness eventually gets us evicted and everything like that. And that's how we wound up on the streets. Not everyone's just an alcoholic, not everyone's just a junkie or a user, or not everyone, you know, has been abused, or there's like, everyone thinks that like there's sort of like five categories that homeless people fit into, you know, like you're, okay, yes, they might fit into one of those five categories, but there's people here that have gone to university, like literally, there's people that have finished university, there's people that have never gone to school at all, they never got the chance, not that they didn't want to, but they never even went to elementary school. Like, that's scary, you know? If you look back on your life, is there anything that you would have done differently? Yeah. What would that be? Paid more attention to school. I wanted to be an engineer at first. No, it's too late for that. How did you go from like having your own place to being homeless? Like what, what was that? Like, what happened in between those two areas of your life? The lack of family support. And, uh, I got cut. So, I lost it. because it has a lot of resources here. Uh, they have a youth program, they have a family program, they have a housing program, and um, they feed the people daily, on a daily basis. We all know each other, there's like one big family here. But all people that are on the streets know each other, take care of each other, mm -hmm. like one big happy family with all of us. That's why it's like here at Co-op. We're normal people, but had half these in lives before we got in this state. I had a three bedroom townhouse, vehicle, everything, buddy. And two, eh. And that's it. People start cutting back, jobs, cutbacks, right? It put us out of work. I bottle pick. I make money, survive every day. Normal is going to work, coming home, you know, spend time with your family, stuff like that, you know, going to a movie. That's normal. Mm -hmm. Sitting around, abusing your body, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, that's not normal. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, you have to hit the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. I was right in the basement suite. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up, I was right yeah. in the basement suite to it. 
Like, when I looked up, I seen the bottom of the barrel. Like, it was, my family said, no, we can't, don't come around here, don't phone, don't, nothing. Everybody turned their backs on me, had nowhere to go. Had one where to go, use. That's always my friend. That's always, that'll always cook me, that'll always help me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when my son got taken away, no offense, the only thing that separates me from you girls is one injection, one light of the pipe, or one pop of the pill. One. That's all it takes. That's the difference that separates you from me right now. That's it. If a person's never done it, all it takes is one. And they can be addicted. But you get in here and you realize that this is just a beautiful community where like bad things have happened to people. Mm -hmm. These guys are just like us. They're just three months down the road with bad circumstances, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Make mistakes. So you try not to make any more mistakes because you know it's not getting you anywhere, right? You learn. You usually learn by them, right? <laughs> Stay like friends' houses. Yeah, but it's been harder because the fact that I'm kind of not staying with them because of the fact that I don't want to get back into the ecstasy, which was my choice of drug. So, and a lot of my friends do ecstasy, and I don't want to be around at all. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why I'm here during the weekdays because a lot of the street kids that I do know do do ecstasy the library all day. So even just a hug, you can get a contact high from them. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and for me, if I get that, I crave it and I don't want to be from it. Would you be able to sleep in a tent not knowing, having a blanket, if you're going to light a fire or not? Not knowing if you're going to get into the shelters or not? I'm all go back to work. You want to go back? What will it take to get you back to work? I need a place to live, a solid place to live, residence. And what? Oh, sorry. That would make the difference? That would be what I get a place to live. One of these places, one of these places that we're at, can help me get my ass into a place where I can call home, where I can come home and have a shower and make my lunch for the next day and have adequate sleep and know my address, then I would get off, I would stop doing what I do, period. And I'd be at work tomorrow morning. Finally found a place through the Boyle Street Co-op, through the housing program, and I'm grateful for that. When people do wind up on the street, it's not as easy to get off the street as a lot of people think. Well, keep trying, yeah. mm -hmm. but never give up. There's always somebody there to help you out. Do you think you could stay clean long, long term, like say to long enough to, to get your son back? As long as I have the proper support and whatnot, oh yes. Yeah. If I try to do it on my own, not a chance. this way in my whole life. I was married for almost, well I was married for 25 years and alcohol came into this situation. Just because you're a user doesn't mean you don't need help. Just because you're a user doesn't mean that you need help right now. And this is another thing, like some people, I don't know, they're, they're just existing at this time and they just need to exist. They need somewhere safe to go, they need somewhere warm to go, and they need a toque. Like, mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for us to provide that and not judge and not try to fix it and not try to push them into anything, whether it be a religion or a program or a, you know, to get a worker or something like that. Sometimes you just need to keep them safe, get them through, you know, this week of minus 30, and then see next week. See tomorrow. It's like every day is different, right? years ago, quite a few years ago. You should see my wedding rings. Oh God, I had jewelry all over. Every ring on every finger, every time, and necklaces, bracelets. Mm -hmm. I lost it all. Towards to alcohol. Mm. That's why, that's why when I, I do, 
appreciate a place like this. I mm -hmm. really do. I just think that everybody's, we're all human, you know, and mm -hmm. this, are, this is my family, so mm -hmm. I'd hope that people back off my family and give them an easier time and talk to them like they're actual people. And there's a regular society has to have a little more patience with people who are trying. Um, I think that's just, I think. That's awesome. It but you know what? You girls stay in school. Be a nurse like I was supposed to be. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. That was what I wanted to be in life, dear. A nurse. Now I'm a homeless person. Fuck. Excuse me. That's okay. okay. No. Yep. Yeah. I'm a homeless thing. Yep. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing with us, Shirley. No problem. <sighs> to all of you young kids in school, stay there, please, from Shirley, okay? Mm -hmm. Please and thank you. Honestly, what it is is, you know, everybody wants to be loved. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be loved. Uh, you know, regardless of, you know, age, size, shape, race, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody needs to be loved. Mm -hmm. And... You know, love comes in all the shapes and sizes and forms. Even if it's somebody picking up the phone and saying, hey, how are you doing today? Well, did you use today? No? Well, good job. Good for you. To me, that's love.